Brekish is a traditional post-clearance settlement on the east coast of Skye. It's a long strip of houses, um, all, each on their own little piece of land that runs off a central road. It's, that's its physical description. It's located beautifully with Benakayak on one side, we look north to Raze, we see the northern lights, we look across to Applecross, um, and in terms of the feel of the place, it's got a vast sense of community. It's a lovely township, it's a beautiful environment, folk are very friendly. The views of course are spectacular, the tranquility, um, the community in Breckish is really nice just the fact that it feels like home. Brackish is a hugely important community that we um, obviously live in. Um, we've got some fantastic neighbours. It's a beautiful place for us to, to bring up children and uh, it feels safe. It means like absolutely everything to me. It's where I've grown up. Basically, it's a home even if I didn't live here. A wind farm placed in Breckish is going to be visible throughout the whole Inner Sound region and that is right the way round from Applecross and Torridon, uh, right the way round to Raze and Rona. It will dominate that landscape. It's awful. There are a bunch of carrots that's been given to us uh, in order to reap the landscape. Too many, too big, too polluting, and most of the money will be going to overseas companies. It's not just a couple of wind turbines, it's 20 200 metre high turbines that will sit on top of a 150 metre high hill. They will completely dominate our village. And I started to look into it more and found out that it's not about providing electricity for our local area, it's not about greens and renewables for Sky, it's just a corporate commercial venture. And then I started to become really worried about it. Quite honestly, it's a blot on the landscape. I mean, where I stay, if I look out of the kitchen window, I shall see is 19 of these monsters towering 200 metres higher, which is probably three times the height of the Nelson's Column, which, you know, to the normal layman, if you said that in somebody in London, we're having these things in our backyard three times the height, they, you know, they'd be totally staggered by it. The thought of there being so much development up in a place which is currently, you know, just empty, which I feel is really important everywhere in the world to have spaces that just have nothing but land and wildlife. Um, so yeah, to think of 20 up to 200 metre high turbines is really scary. When I heard about uh, these 20 turbines at 200 metres tall, I was astonished. I couldn't believe um, this, the sheer scale of this development. And uh, the way that it had been approached, uh, I felt there was very little consultation until that had been raised by a local resident. I was uh, none the wiser. People have to live here, don't they? You know, and it is so important if you've chosen to live in a rural area, obviously you've chosen it because of its position and the mountains around you and the environment. Um, and also the fact that I suppose I love to preserve the environment you know, because I'm just so passionate about it. I don't want to destroy it. 
Well, it will affect bird life. But Bob the bird man has done studies on that and he assures us that is it three golden eagles per turbine per year, something like that. Um, we have our own mini turbine and uh, we've never seen any dead birds there. But these turbines are ten times the size and the sweep will be ten, more than ten times by their blades. So it will affect the bird uh, migration pathways. huge concern on the environment because they're going because it's a peatland they're going to be digging up to remove tons of concrete and even construct the wind turbines there it's going to have a huge carbon emission and all that reserve is going to be destroyed and it's going to be horrible for the wildlife there it's going to be tons of animals that will be left without anywhere to go and it's going to have a big impact like the entire like ecosystem of wreckage We know from the Ben Akateel proposal that they have estimated they will remove something like 117,000 cubic metres uh, of peat. That is for nine turbines. Here they're talking of up to 20. And that will have a massive impact on, the, on, that, um, on the ecology and the landscape of those common grazings. Aside from the massive visual impact of the turbines, I'm really worried about the, the destruction of this fantastic piece of moorland. Um, it's been a, an empty area, but an important empty area. It's peatland, it carries great reserves of, of carbon, not just for us, not just for Scotland, but for the whole world. These are important resources. They're going to be just brutalised, they're going to be devastated. The, the wildlife that's there, the fauna that's, and flora that's there, Everything that I've known, everything that my parents knew, everything that my grandparents knew will be gone just like that. You know, I have concerns about the degree of microplastics that are, you know, adjacent to the water supply for the entire village uh, and uh, Broadford Town itself. There's also, to me, a question of necessity. Uh, we, al we already generate enough electricity to, to provide for the whole of the Isle of sky and yet here we are being asked to build and live next to 20 massive turbines with with minimal benefit locally we pay the highest electricity rates in the UK and there's been no proposal to mitigate those factors definitely the microplastics that can come off of the um, turbines we try, me and my partner try to eat as healthily as we can, we filter our water, we do everything to try and live quite a healthy lifestyle and the thought of there being plastics coming through our water um, and that's something you can't really stop is scary and it's something that would make us have to reconsider where we're living and calling home. It's not compensation, it, it's, it's, it's pence. In my case, it's sheep feed, literally sheep feed. In fact, it probably wouldn't even pay for the sheep feed that I, uh, that I need on an annual basis. This is, this is old Scotland, this is about land and money. That's what it comes down to. And trying to buy off the local communities with what we know from Eden Bain is half a percent of their turnover over the over the lifetime of those to, of, of that wind farm it's nothing it's literally sheep feed i think compared to what money they will be taking in it's it's peanuts that's that's here and it's kind of dirty money in a way i feel we've got mug on our forehead mugs this I look at Scotland's oil and what have we got to show for that? And then you look at Norway with their trillions and their oil fund. So I feel as if the same thing's going to happen with the, the turbines. 
that if you thought that you were at least getting the electricity from it would be a tiny tiny little bit of okay <laughs> at least there's one glimmer of positivity from this but the fact that that and all of the profits are going to go off sky when sky is in so desperate need of funds for things like toilets and potholes and all of the rest. I, th I think it's a token gesture, isn't it? When you actually look at the large scale profits that are made from these uh, industrial scale turbines, it's a, it's a token gesture. You know, it's a skim off the side. I think it amounts to about 1% of the overall profits. When you compare that to some successful wind turbine projects, for example, in the Western Isles, Point and Sandwick Trust, North Tolsta, significantly higher community benefits and all reinvested locally and also a much smaller visual uh, scale. So it's a no-brainer. I'm Rosie Woodhouse and I live at Croft 34 Lower Breckish on the Isle of Skye. Well, it is my backyard and it's our whole country's backyard. I would look at a sustainable approach to renewables in our community several community-owned turbines might be a really good compromise. We would be contributing towards renewables targets. We would be providing a substantial benefit to the local community and it would be done on a much smaller, non-corporate, non-commercial scale. So I think I'm looking after the community in our best interests. I don't think NIMBYism is a pejorative that should be uh, waged against us. Graham Gerrard, Broken Shillach, half of 15, Upper Breckish. Well, this guy. Quite honestly, I think they should uh, back the status quo and not have, have this in Brickish because, quite honestly, it does nothing for the people in the area at all. I'm Susan McInnes and I live at Ty Echen, 8 Upper Brickish. You know, just do it on a smaller scale. Allow the community to develop their own community wind farm. If we have to look at them, let, let us all benefit from it. I'm Kate Woodhouse, um, Croft 34, Mingulay, Lower Breckish. I'm going to go to the hospital and i to go to the hospital and go to I mean, dog is not cheated first. I is a theory could be much of a is a clown Industrial giant it is cool. Douglas Strachan, 6 Ashig, Isle of Skye. Listen to the community and go with the flow with how they feel. I'm Saren Stevens of 8 Ashig, IV428PZ. This is going to have a huge impact on everybody's lives within the community. It's going to have an impact on visitors as they come up, yeah, I would just hope that you really consider not to do it. I'm Andrew Mahan and I live in Ty Mahan, Lower Breckish. I think it needs to be thought on very carefully. Um, there's room for dialogue, there's room for dialogue about uh, community-owned wind turbines. That certainly is my strong uh, opinion that we should be uh, investing in ourselves as a community and we should be speaking out strongly against, against this development. Nick Ferguson, 40, Lower Breckish. Wrong proposal in the wrong place. We can't keep taking bits of our landscape and replacing it with concrete. We can't keep doing that. Somebody, somewhere, has to say no.